Hi, it's Rob Timmings from ECT for Health. Uh, in this little short session, we're going to go right back to the basics, right back to the cell. Some very, very basic cellular physiology. You'll remember learning about the cell. You'll remember learning that we have lots and lots of different types of cells and that every cell in the body has its own individual role or its own individual job. Let's draw a cell. It could be any cell. So for argument's sake, this could be a heart cell, a, a cardiomyocyte. Uh, its whole job in life is to contract. When it's given a stimulus, it'll just contract. It could be a brain cell. Its whole job in life is to send an electrical message. It could be one of those cells in the pancreas, you know, the beta cell from the islets of Langerhans in the, in the pancreas. And its whole job in life is just to secrete some sort of a hormone like insulin. It could be a fibroblast whose job is to sit in the bottom of a, of a wound bed and manufacture collagen for wound repair. So it really doesn't matter what sort of cell we're looking at here. The point is that all cells have a unique and individual role in the body. To do their work, their primary job, a cell has to make energy. And you'll recall from your probably grade nine or grade 10 science, that the energy that a cell has to manufacture is called ATP. Let's not get too technical, adenosine triphosphate. I want you to remember it just simply as energy. This is raw, unadulterated chemical energy. A cell makes this energy to do its job. That's the main point here. Now, to make the energy, to make any sort of energy, we need fuel. Think of this as a furnace. I put a log on my furnace and it produces energy. We call that heat. The fuel that drives a cell's energy production, ATP production, is called glucose. Coupled with that substrate that we all know to love to hate, oxygen, together glucose and oxygen undergo a chemical change within the cytosol, within the cytoplasm of the cell, and within the mitochondria of the cell. And that process, you'll recall that process was once upon a time learned about, and it was called the Krebs cycle. Some of you may have remembered it as the tricarboxylic acid cycle or just the TCA cycle. The point here is glucose goes in, with oxygen and energy comes out or energy is produced by the cell. Now, if I've got enough oxygen and glucose going into my cell, for every one molecule of oxygen, I can manufacture 34 units of energy. I actually manufacture 38 units of energy, but four of those are cleaved and used within that chemical reaction called the Krebs cycle. So the net gain is 34 units of ATP for every one glucose that goes in with oxygen. Now this process of using glucose and oxygen, uh, this, this part of the Krebs cycle is called oxidative phosphorylation. It therefore is an oxygen or oxidative process. Without oxygen, we call that anaerobic metabolism. So a cell that doesn't have oxygen is simply called hypoxic. A hypoxic cell is one without oxygen. Now a hypoxic cell can manufacture ATP, but it can't manufacture ATP to the tune of 34 units. Instead, without oxygen, a hypoxic cell can only turn that one glucose into just two units of ATP. And when it does that, those two units of ATP are not enough energy to drive the cell's primary function. So my cell stops working. It doesn't die straight away when it becomes hypoxic. It just ceases to function. So if this was a whole lot of brain cells that didn't get enough oxygen and therefore couldn't make enough ATP, then what I'm going to see in my patient is an altered level of consciousness. If it was a heart cell or a bunch of heart cells that were hypoxic and therefore not making enough ATP, then we're not going to see good cardiac function. We won't see a good pumping action. We won't see a good electrical um, pathway through the heart. We'll see ECG changes. If these were cells that lined the bed of somebody's ulcer on their wound, 
we're not going to see that wound heal. And you know that diabetic ulcers and arterial ulcers and venous ulcers, these things are chronic indolent sores that just don't heal overnight. It's because they're hypoxic. They're not making the collagen that they require to make to heal the wound. So the principle here is the Krebs cycle is that chemical reaction that ultimately takes oxygen and glucose and turns it into energy so that cell can continue to function. Last piece of the puzzle. Every furnace has to produce waste. Cells manufacture carbon dioxide, or CO2, and water as their waste products. And these products need to be removed from the body. We eliminate our carbon dioxide and our water through our respiration or breathing. We blow off our CO2, we blow off our water, and we also, through urination, we remove our CO2 as bicarbonate through our urine and also a large amount of our water through urine. Basic cellular physiology.